three new variants of the coronavirus are a cause for concern. These variants seem to spread more easily and quickly among people and lead to more infections. But why does this happen? Here's what you need to know about COVID-19 variants. All living matter, when it's replicating, when they're making copies of themselves, some errors occur and some changes occur. That's just part and parcel of how cells replicate. Now, mostly when those changes occur, they minor and they make no difference, or sometimes they're disadvantageous, in which case those viruses will just die out. When we are concerned about it is when the mutations occur in the spike protein in that part of the virus that is attaching to the human cell, because then it could change the way in which the virus behaves. On occasion, there is a change that occurs in the virus that gives it an advantage. And the virus then exploits that advantage and it can become a dominant virus, as we have seen in the 501YV2 variant. We have many, many variants. I don't even know how many, but we know that in the first wave, we had about 35 different variants that were spreading at various rates. What we have seen is that this 501YV2 variant has become dominant. In other words, the other 35 that were normally spreading, they are just spreading too slowly. When we look at the history of the coronavirus, the original Wuhan virus quite rapidly mutated and created a new variant called the D614G. And that's the variant that was introduced into South Africa, initially from Italy and then from other parts of Europe. Now we have the D614G variant that has now changed to add all these new mutations. So if we look at the most common variants we have, the, besides the 501YV2 variant, the others are all D614G. In the case of the 501YV2 variant, it was first found in an individual who was in the Eastern Cape. Now, we don't know if it actually caused the mutation in the Eastern Cape. It's unfortunate that it's sometimes referred to as the South African variant, because it's actually now in 15 countries throughout the world. It is not appropriate to refer to it geographically. I know the temptation is there to do that, but it's best to call it by what it is, its name. It's got a name, 501YV2. Our colleagues from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine have done a modeling study to look at an estimate of how much faster it is. And they estimated that it's about 50% faster in the way in which it's spread. In other words, it's 50% more infectious. This variant, while it spreads faster and puts more pressure on the hospital and could lead to more deaths just because the hospitals are so full, but it doesn't look like it causes any more severe a disease. We do not have a definitive answer to that question. What we can say, it seems that past infection remains protective. Even though the new variant is able to escape natural antibodies, it seems that the body's ability to fight these viruses, which is based on two parts of the immune system, antibodies and T cells. And between them together in the human body, they seem to be protective. The Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine, both are based on mRNA technology. It's a new kind of technology that in people who are vaccinated with those two vaccines, their blood is still able to kill this new variant. It's not able to kill it as well as the old variants, 
but it still is able to kill these variants in a test tube. We're just waiting to see what those results will be for the AstraZeneca vaccine.